Our next speaker this afternoon is Jason De Sosa, Enterprise Architect leading NAB Architecture Lab team. He has been providing thought leadership on all things APIs, integration, and distributed systems. So welcome, Jason. Can't hear you. How are you going? That's better. Perfect. That's better. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, really good. It's a nice to day today and some, watching some really good, interesting content. So, yeah. That's nice. Okay. So, you're going to take us through the API and event discovery. Looks like you're all ready. Yeah, let's go. Let's 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 go right into it. So, uh, thanks for attending, everyone. Um, you know, um, my name is Jason D'Souza. I'm here to talk to you about API and event discovery. So, in a very similar vein as what we just went through, but a bit more focused on um, you know, some technical aspects of what we're going to do. So I'm going to talk today and share our experience and findings with using async API and open API spec for search and discovery. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit better about us, our company, you know, who I am, um, dive into our API and e event ecosystem. I'm going to go through the search and discovery use cases that we're focused on that we found the most value in pursuing. Um, go into open API spec and what, what we did in terms of uh, some of the things we used to drive our search and discovery. Um, do the same thing with async API. And um, yeah, and I guess we'll have a chat with some questions at the end of it. So uh, about NAB, um, we're NAB, it's Australia's largest business bank. We, we work with small, medium, and large businesses. We have more than 30,000 people uh, serving 9 million customers in Australia, New Zealand, and around the world. So who am I? Jason D'Souza, Enterprise Architect for Technology Architecture. I've been in that for a little while now, 14 years. Um, that picture over there is when I was in Texas a couple of years ago. I picked up uh, a bit of a passion for barbecue. So uh, pitmaster in training, I'm not there yet. But um, after I had it over there, I thought I have to, I have to learn how to do this. Uh, so that's something that um, I'll be do I like to do on the weekends. Um, I used to be the API architect or the senior architect for API gateways uh, for our API as a platform service at NAB, which uh, we build using Kong Enterprise. Uh, and um, since then, I've moved on to this role. Um, if anyone wants to connect, I'm always happy to have a chat and learn new things with people. Um, you can see my LinkedIn over there um, to connect with me. So. Let's talk about our API and event ecosystem. At NAB, we, we've been working on the last couple of years to really um, build capability throughout our organization uh, and service it as APIs and events. So we have many business business domains. You know, the, this diagram shows um, some of them account management cards, you know, customer profile, uh, some technical ones like platform operations. Um, and all of these business domains, you know, they, they need to provide capability um, to our customers, our suppliers, our bankers, our regulators, our partners. Um, and they do that through APIs, which are built on top of, you know, our business services, which are typically built in Spring, Spring Boot Java. Um, so to surface that business capability, we use our APIs for queries and commands. And we use our Kafka events for significant state changes, something that's changed, um, you know, within those business models or business resources. Um, and we wrap it all up with identity management. And if we do need to build anything sp for a specific experience, um, we'll use Node and GraphQL to do that on top, which is built on top of our core business services. So with all of these business domains and APIs and events to provide the capability, it starts becoming very busy and it's, it's hard, it gets hard to understand what, what is out there that I can use to develop against. So that's that's why we're here today to talk about what we can do to enable search. So let's have a chat about what are the use cases that we found that we kind of targeted. So the first one um, is business case development. So, um, you know, it's we're finding it that being able to understand the capability that's available within our tech platforms is really helpful when putting together a business case. They're pretty much all surfaced through APIs and events. So uh, when when there's an opportunity that we want to chase, being able to understand what's there today, so I don't have to wait, or what's coming in through a pipeline is actually quite valuable um, when when looking at your API 
um, in, in thinking about search and discovery. You know, the next thing is once the business case has been created, well, now it's time to build. So, you know, most of us will be thinking of an API developer portal. Um, this is where we, you know, where, where we get our engineers, where we get our developers and start start learning and start playing and start building against, yeah? Um, the last two are probably not thought about so much. So, you know, after we've built something and it's in production, when there is an issue, it's quite handy to be able to quickly search for the interface that is, is causing the problem. Typically, there's a URI, um, there's some error codes. You know, what does this mean? Where does it come from? Um, as a consumer or as a, as a publisher, either, either way, being able to locate the, the details and understand what, what's going on down to the field level and error level is quite um, useful before you kind of get to the next stage. And then security management, it's a similar type of thing, but um, you know, what's very important is understanding the, the risk position that you're at. If you understand the interface, you can find it and look at the data that's been exposed. Um, you can take the appropriate actions. So now that we have some use cases, how can we use Open API and Async API to help us? You know, to drive this discovery of API, APIs and events. What are some of the things that we can do? Well, probably something to think about is what what drives discovery. It's all about the person and what they're trying to do. So we need to think about what's out there for that person, what's applicable for them. And then we've got to, got to consider what metadata do we need to drive the discovery for the users. So I'm going to show you our internal developer portal and some of the thinking that, that we, we put into it and why. Um, so this is our internal developer portal. You can search for your API. So we're in API search at the moment. And we um, like to search by API resources. So typically, if you're searching, you're searching for maybe a, a customer or an account or you know a card type of API. So that's what you'll type in. But maybe what you want to dive down and filter and drill down to specifically what you want. So we've got a couple of ways of doing that. Namespace, that's kind of your um, your, your business domain. You know, If you know that you want to search within the cards namespace, then you'll kind of drill down on that. Um, category is just another way of drilling down, but more of an enterprise, um, you know, agnostic way. So we use the buy-in landscape to do that. Um, you know, it's a similar way where you can drill down to exactly what you're doing because you may not know which which business unit is is offering that service. Um, gateway, we have multiple gateways to serve the different uh, consumers. You can you can look at it from that way. Uh, API status, if you need to know. Um, you know, is this implemented? Is this in development? Is this planned? Um, you know, we have our API lifecycle, which uh, which helps you drill into what you're looking for. An environment, sometimes, um, you know, sometimes it's more than just production. Sometimes it's, you know, what's what's in product, what's in, in the pipeline, what's getting built, what, where is it at? And um, last and not least is our what we call a domain API. So this is um, it's the same concept as private and public, but it's private to your business domain versus public outside of your business, business domain. So um, internally, that helps us um, find what, you know what we're looking for. Um, so let's put, let's try and make that real and look at open API. So look, this is you know bread and butter for a lot of us here. We've been doing this for years. But uh, I wanted to talk about some interesting things. So, you know, the first field that you've typically got to, that you've typically got to fill up is the API title field. And why I wanted to highlight this is that when you start having, you know, hundreds, even thousands of specs, you need to start having strong naming standards for consistency because we use the API title here to drive our search. That's our keyword. Um, so we model it around resources, so resource oriented titles, as opposed to maybe um, having a, an API spec for per and on a per operation basis. And I'll go into that in the next slide about you know what, what how that helps discovery. Um, you know, some people don't know that you can use annotations in an open API spec, and you know I I I find them quite useful. I wouldn't I wouldn't shy away from them. Um, so you know we wanted to be able to kind of filter and and tag by in a, a category to, no matter what, which business unit is 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 exposed in this API. So being able to kind of put in our own tags and annotations for our own needs is quite helpful. So yeah, they definitely definitely use them where we're applicable. Um, 
you know, we've got you, then inside of inside of an API spec, you can have multiple operations, yeah. And the way we like to do it is, if we're going to have an API spec around a resource, so this is our products uh, API for our open banking um, stuff, and having a resource, having a spec around products, but having multiple operations around it helps us helps the user discover related APIs, right? So let's have a look at the next slide. And in it, this is our internal developer portal. Um, I've done a search for products. I've clicked it, it's come up. So inside of the products API spec, there there's some options for me. So maybe I know I need to do something with products. I know I need to get some fields. I can have a look at the, the options and the, the methods available that are applicable. Um, you know, maybe I just need to get, maybe I thought I just need to get the products, but now there's also the get product details. So if I do need to do anything more specific or I'm coming up with some good ideas, that's available to me. So what we found is that grouping related operations together with the resource helps drive the discovery of where you want to go and helps the user create a better products and experiences and, and, um, and outcomes for our business. Uh, one thing, what one thing that is interesting is, you know, how many operations should you have per spec? So, you know, a human can only comprehend so much. So, we've put a limit on about ten operations per spec. You know, um, there is that thing about a human can't comprehend more than seven things at once, but ten seems to kind of get us get get us like we really haven't had to expand more than that. It does really cover majority of the use cases, um, and. And we're able to kind of offer that. So yeah, that's probably what I would um, recommend. Um, let's jump into the next level of detail. So within the API spec, you know, you've you've gone and, and said we've got this API resource, we've got these operations, you know, get products. But at the end of the day, it's all about the data. So you need to document your fields very well. Like we just watched a session on that, and it, you know. If, it's very, very important. This is why the person is here at the end of the day. They want to understand, can I use this, you know, can I get a product? Can it come in a brand so I can go and do get my business outcome, right? So um, you need to say what that is. You need to explain the format of it. You need to show examples. Um, and you need to, that needs to be consistent across all your specs so that your users have the trust to be able to follow, follow that and, and find what they need. Um, cool. So, oop. Now, async API and events. Events are very similar. This is something we built recently. You know, we, we had a quite a bit of success with API search and discovery. We realized that, you know, we we have a lot of events and we want to expose that out to our business and our engineers to be able to build things and find things in the same way. Um, in a similar vein, we know that events are produced by different business domains. Uh, we want to manage them in the same type of life cycle, um, but, they're, they're, but they're slightly different. And, you know, AP, open API specs is not going to cut it for um, for events. So um, again, you know, you can search by keywords using your, your, maybe a resource type of thing. Um, namespace to find out, you know, which kind of business domain you're sitting under, category, exactly the type, type of way, just a different way of drilling in. We've got our clusters field here. This is um, to help you understand you know, you've got multiple, so we use Kafka, so lots of different Kafka brokers, um, whether you're running for an, an enterprise event broker versus a, a more specialized one. Uh, environment, you may not necessarily want to find everything that's in production. And um, and whether, you know, it's intended to be used outside of the domain or within. So we use a async API for this, and um, it's, it's pretty cool. So... There is some slight differences than open API spec though. So in the, in the way we used it. For title, uh, we found that just just having a title on resource isn't enough. Um, we it, Because it is around a state change, we'd like to have the title around the resource and a type of change. And that's something interesting. It's a different way of modeling and different way of putting putting this documentation together. Uh, it's just a different way of managing it. And that, we find that when people are looking at events, they're looking for for something that happened. So being able to search for, you know, this is a very generic one, account authority has changed, 
but you know um if you moved it to something different maybe um user has logged in or something like that um that's the type of thing it's a bit it's a bit of a different way of managing things uh again um we've got annotations in async api so very very helpful um you know for your own personal customizations for us we wanted to manage it and categorize using the biome landscape uh pretty useful um we we also wanted to start managing the namespace within the spec themselves so we have that there as well um and then you've got the service object so you know it's it's very important to understand as a consumer if i want to subscribe to this event you know where's it hosted where how can i get to it um so yeah, that's that. That off. This is what we found quite useful. Uh, one thing that was a bit different, bit, a bit controversial when we were designing this was: do we use the subscribe or publish options within the channels object? Um, and we landed on subscribe. So we we realized that when we're documenting this and we're trying to enable event search and discovery, it's all about for us, our use cases are about consuming the event. So subscribe helps us describe what you need to do to consume this event. Um, one, one other thing that's interesting is, um, oh, one other thing that's interesting, it's a bit different than APIs, is that it's quite typical, it's quite typical for us to have a, a, a Kafka topic or an event which has multiple messages multiple message types within it. So in this case, uh, we have an event here called an account authority has changed. Inside of it, there are different types of changes. There'll be different messages. So the schemas for those messages will be slightly different. Um, for the user to go and find that, that they're interested in account authority changes, and then to be able to drill down and say, okay, if I subscribe to this event, I'll be able to know when it's created and when it's deleted and what it's going to look like. And because we're able to use ASIC API, it's be we can drill down and see the messages and what they look like. And using an, an async API renderer, we're able to um, have the user see this, you know, and it's represented in a beautiful way. Something that, you know, not not all of our users like to see the code perspective. For, if for some reason seeing it in a beautiful um, in a beautiful way makes it a lot easier for them to comprehend and understand what they're trying to do. Um, so. The last part with async API, and this is this is really critical for us, was uh, Avro support, so native Avro support. Um, we use Avro to serialize our data within our, our Kafka event streams. So maintaining the one schema standard makes a lot of sense. It removes any chance of errors. Um, you know, we we do use our schema registries, and um, you know, making sure that that our our consumers see like. The, what's described here is exactly what they're going to get. You know, it's critical. Um, yeah, so maybe um, with only a couple of minutes left, I might take a step back and talk about data quality. You know, what, this is something we learned pretty early on. We've been doing this for a couple of years now, but bad data equals bad results. It, it just makes your API specs useless. Um, so, you know, these are the four things in terms of data quality that I encourage you, if you were to take on something like this or you were to improve, to really put in controls to manage your, you know, your accuracy, make sure that what's documented matches the implementation. Make sure that your specs are complete. So, you know, just having an operation in there um, and not, not much data or having some field notes without, without examples is, is not really complete. It's not good enough. It has to be current has to match what's actually in production or you know or, or if you had a, an environment filter like we do it matches what you you know what's in the environments that you're looking at and consistency so having three or four specs to be of a very high quality but having the other 100 to, to not doesn't build the trust and that you need with the user base your user has to trust that when they come and use your tooling to search whether you have it in your developer portal or you use some other ways um, that, they, that, they, that they know this is correct and they can rely on it. Um, and if you're not sure what to do, look, just try, try early, try early, make sure, you know, that your data quality is always improving. You, you're probably not going to get it on day one. So got a couple of learnings to share and a bit of a reiteration really, but, you know, on the open API spec side, 
it's perfect. You know, it's, it's built it's built for REST, um, REST API search and discovery. Um, you know, using it for for JSON payloads, even XML. It, you know, it's 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 good. Um, don't don't overload it. Don't put too many operations in there. It just makes it hard for the user to comprehend what's exactly what they're dealing with. Um, you know, and that's why we landed on one restful resource per spec. Um, yeah, and, and if you are going to, you know, put in extra things in there, make sure they're at least related to to give that, you know, relationship for discovery. Uh, on the async API side, um, yeah, yeah, look really, really good for Kafka event streams. Um, that's what we're finding. Uh, you know, if you are using Avro, yep, it's it's actually working out quite well. Uh, and consider you're using the channels object. So in terms of the subscribe or publish, um, for us, you know, when we when we thought about how we're going to use it, it was always about the, the consumer. So that's why we chose subscribe. But maybe um, your consumers may want to publish into it. Maybe that's what it is, right? So so that's something that you need to consider. And data quality, like cannot 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 satisfy like you know any more than I have probably. But data quality control is the key. It's Sounds like a governancey thing, but and I guess it is. But you know, put in put in things that to make sure that this thing is done properly. Because um, you know, you can have the most beautiful websites in the world, but if the data is not right, then you know it's not helpful. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, as a summary, understand your API search and discovery use cases within the scope of your ecosystem. Everyone has a different ecosystem. Every company does. So understand what you're going after. If you do need to customize user annotations, they're very useful, but you know, you probably don't want half your spec to be customization. So, so you gotta don't go overboard. Um, and focus on data quality. Consistency is key. And you know, building that trust with your um, your your users, your user base is, you know, is, that's what you want. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll um, leave it up to questions. Can you hear me? Yep. All right, good. Thanks, Jason. So uh, have we considered search and discovery for GraphQL APIs? Uh, yeah, um, so we have. Um, we're, we're looking to invest into that space kind of in, in, in the next thing. There's some differences with GraphQL than um, you know, standard REST or, or, um, or events in terms of um, having to Having to work with introspection, introspection uh, endpoints and stuff, so we're just trying to work with that at the moment. But um, definitely, I think um, you know, as as we invest more and more into GraphQL and see the take up, I think it makes a lot of sense. So you have a mixture of both REST and Graph. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and and uh, uh, why we didn't just rely on our schema repositories for event discovery? Some thoughts around that. Um, so what, 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 what we found with the schema re repos was that, um, you know, we, I showed the example earlier where we have an async API spec, which has the, the, the event, the, the event on the topic with multiple messages inside of it, being able to, um, show the relationship in, of multiple messages in that are related to the one event was actually quite useful. Um, so we found that it's a, it's all about discovery. And instead of being able to tune into exact specific topics, being able to help the users not just to search whatever they're specifically looking for, but then to discover related things, um, was quite useful doing it this way. Okay. Yep. Um, that's all we had for the questions. Do you have anything else to add, Jason? Um, yeah, no, have a play around. Um, I don't know many people that are playing with async API in earnest. Um, so yeah, like um, if you do find anything interesting or have any have any learnings to share, uh, yeah, let us know. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Jason, for your time and sharing your experience. Wonderful. Uh, not a worry. Thanks for having us.